Shiva Sheikh here on my special show Street Diaries and today I am with a special guest hai. that's none other than Sunny Leone so join me as I welcome her on Zoom lovely to have you Thank as you. always and this time we are going to enjoy some delicious food yes. and talk about your special show which you have been hosting for the ninth time yes yes I'm how so excited, excited are you for this I'm very excited to be here I'm excited I want to get to the table <laughs> come let's do this <laughs> Sunny, as you could see that you have made some delicious food and some healthy juices. Normally, what Sunny prefers to have on a daily basis? Um, on a daily basis, I'm really simple. Um, so, I'm pretty clean, I guess. And, you know, for the afternoons, whatever my, whatever people are cooking for lunch, my house help is cooking for lunch, I also eat the same thing because I never know what to eat. Um, I like trying different things that um, I try and keep things a little as much vegan as possible in my house. Um, I love cooking myself so anytime I find recipes online uh, that I can make for the children uh, and myself um, I do that. And Sunny you have moved from Punjab to you know to, uh, to, to outskirts of you know India to coming back to Mumbai. So I'm sure that you have different, different you know, delicacies and different, different kind of foods. Mm -hmm. uh, when you moved to you know, India, when you came back to India, to Mumbai especially, what was the first dish you ate the most, which you were like really craving for? I don't know. I grew up in a Punjabi household, so we ate um, Indian food. We ate Punjabi khana Monday through Friday. <laughs> um, so it was dal, sabji, rice. Mm -hmm. And then on the weekend, um, at when I was younger, we all ate meat. Mm -hmm. um, so the weekends were for pizza or uh, chicken or anything like that. My family wanted to cook, mm -hmm. but mainly we ate Indian food. And my one thing that stays at the top of the list is uh, alu ke parante. You have to go gobi ke parante. Um, I love. I never say no to. And I had to teach my chef here at home how to make it Punjabi style. There's no kanjusi at all in the, my parante. Uh, so that I'm always, I always want my kids to eat it because it was something that I loved growing but up. But how do you still manage to stay fit? I just eat one piece. I don't eat three. But Sunny, what do you like to banana What do you really love to cook? Uh, I love um, cooking Italian food. Um, my kids love when I make Italian food too, which is good. And uh, like I said, I like trying different things and making different things because we live in a world where there's so many preservatives in food and we actually don't know what we're going to get sometimes when we order places. Uh, so especially during monsoons, I keep everything in-house. I have a deal with my, with my kids and my husband is we will not eat outside sweets, but I will make you sweet every day something. We'll find something online or we'll cook it together. Uh, that way they stay healthy. Do you feel love and food are interconnected? Absolutely. Um, so that's one of my uh, love languages is actually cooking uh, to show how, you know, how much I love somebody. Um, I love cooking at home. I so Sunny, uh, I would like to serve you something in case if you want to try this out. Okay. One for you, one for me. Yeah. Cool. It looks really good. Yeah. It has vegetables inside which means it's probably healthy, a little bit healthy. Sunny, now coming back to something very special as we spoke about love and food, there is something which is about love, which you are connected to, which is about your show, which is featuring on you know, MTV, which is about Splits Villa, and you're the, uh, you know, it's the ninth time you're connected with this one. And this time, you will get something different. Yes. I'm already getting already, you know, we could see you have turned into a love guru almost, you're the queen of hearts, so tell me about it. Um, first of all, hosting Splits Villa is so much fun every single year. I learned so much about human behavior, human relationships, um, relationships emotionally or, you know, there's not so much physical going on on the show, at least I don't think. Um, and I think watching people's, how they transform from the beginning the choices that they make, the choices and connections that they make, and how every action has a reaction. 
um, whether it was a good choice or not. I mean, it's definitely extremely fascinating. Uh, when we watch Splits Villa, um, sometimes certain, you know, bits are either missing because, first of all, you could not have 24 <laughs> hours um, of the show on television. Um, but, you know, you watch, you watch people's facial expressions and how they react or you literally can watch somebody's heart just break right in front of you, which is so sad because you feel so bad for them. And their reasons of how they feel are completely justified based on the circumstances that are happening. So that's always very, um, very challenging because you feel so bad. But then you also see like young, beautiful, sexy people. They're all like getting to know each other. And, and that's what being young is all about. You know, I think sometimes we forget when we are on these some of these shows that we're not expecting people to find um, marriage, you know, or someone that they're going to get married to. Um, but we do want them to be connected with people and um, connect with them on, a, on an emotional level, on a psychological level, physical level, whatever it is, a friendship level. So we want them to do that. And through that friendship, they're able to you know, you see that those are the people that end up winning the show most of the years. Is not necessarily, um, if it's not a love match, it's a friendship. And it's a deep friendship. Um, uh, so it's really fun to watch. If you analyze all of the winners, there were people that had made great choices in the beginning based on either physical attraction or, um, you know, they were vibing together, getting to know each other. They, they fit the same wavelength and it was awesome. Do you feel love fades as it grows old, like people start like, you know, feeling a bit, you know, out of proportion or because, you know, the demands are increasing, you know, once it gets into a relationship, say like a marriage, before, it, you know, marriage, it's something else, it's all, you know, lovey-dovey, you know, the gifts, the gestures, the meeting, but, you know, when it get, you know, when it turns out to be a marriage, when, you know, kids, you know, are you know brought to the world? <laughs> Things keep yeah. changing. <laughs> you're not married yet. No, you're not. <laughs> I can see who you're getting. She's getting wrong information from her friends, <laughs> and this is what's wrong with the dating society. <laughs> is it feels like you you see marriage as like a lock and key, and everything's going to be horrible, and <laughs> it's not. I promise. <laughs> Yes, love does change. Yes, it evolves into different stages, um, you know, but that's natural. You have to be with somebody who you genuinely like, like not just physically and, and, you know, emotionally, but also someone who's your friend, you know, because when things go bad or because they just do, or when fights happen, you have to have that respect between each other. That line, certain lines don't get crossed. So, I do think that, like, yes, it evolves, but it's not bad. I promise. Definitely. <laughs> you know, there, the other side of yeah, it. you should. Um, there, you know, there's probably people around you who maybe are not having such a great time in their marriage and are telling you don't do it, or you're seeing things. But there's the other side as well, where we see maybe your parents or maybe um, one of your friend's parents who've been together for 30, 40 years. Their love absolutely has evolved and has changed, but they're so cute together still, even when they're fighting and bickering and we find it funny, but they also went through so many challenges and that's the same, that's any time when you fall in love with someone. But that spark when you first meet someone, yeah, it needs to be there, but yeah, it does change a little bit. But coming back to <coughs> food, uh, what is like one unusual dish you have had, you know, uh, in terms of food and you were like, really, I had that. It was very um, bad in experience. So my right? father growing up found it really funny to cook different items and then um, make us try it. So he had a rule, and I have this rule with my children too, is that you have to at least try the food and then you can say you don't like it. So one, one day my dad is in the kitchen, he's cooking something, it looks like egg burji. Okay, that's the shakal <laughs> of what he's cooking. So he's done the onions, the garlic, all the ginger, he some cheese and dal game, and said burji banana. it. And then we sat down to eat and he gave us, ro and my mom made rotis, and he put the sabji in, in our plate and told us to eat it. So like good children, hamne kaya. But we didn't like it, and it was very, very weird tasting. 
we found out that it was goat brain. So, <laughs> so, and he thought it was funny and he was laughing at us. He liked it because my father was into cooking uh, different things and trying different things. But he found it very, very funny. So that was something that I ate that I'll never forget. And he was laughing at us and <clears throat> it was horrible. Do you have had any bizarre food? <clears throat> that was bizarre. That was a bizarre That was food. like, you know, top of the bazaar for me. <laughs> um, as I got older, I got to be a lot more picky. And I was very cautious of my father. If you could eat one food for the rest of your life, which one would it be and why? Mm, um, that's tough. I would eat paratas, <laughs> aloo paratas, gobi paratas. It has, you know, uh, my starches and it has vegetables. <laughs> and if you could create a signature dish, you know, at a restaurant you really like or you, have, you really love going, <coughs> which one would it be and what would you name it? Uh, this is a really hard question, um, but I love baking. And if I could make a dish that was baked, like I bake all sorts of really healthy vegetables for my kids, and then I make, um, put like a whole garlic, all the vegetables, all the spices, I bake it, and then I make a soup out of it, and they love it, which is great. Um, so I think I would wanna create things that were super healthy, but really, um, really tasty. Because we get that confused sometimes when we're eating, mm -hmm. is that, the healthy stuff isn't going to taste good. So my children eat vegetables. I'm very proud of this. <laughs> they don't fight me. And, um, you know, my I feel like my job is to create items that are really yummy, but that taste good. When you're on the set of, you know, of your movies, of your ser you know, series, what do you love having the most? Like, uske bagar shoot karna bhi na, you feel like, nahi, mujhe ye chahiye to have those, you know, energy oh. for shoot. Oh, I don't, I'm not that person. Um, <laughs> I don't care. I literally, I'm that, I'm that child who you just give me food and I'll eat it. Anything, except for meat. I don't eat meat. Um, but I like uh, this, like, really nice water that someone makes for me on set. My assistant makes for me on set that has like lemon, some mint, some some. Oh, there he puts chia seeds in it. That I like. Okay. I'm not very picky. Gotcha. You like basically prefer like very like little stuff, minimalistic stuff. Yeah. If like you have gone to a lot of places, Sunny, and we have seen your travel diaries also, you know, with your husband, with your kids, which is that one place you really love to go just for the love of food? Ooh, um, the love of food, maybe Los Angeles. And one dream destination you'd really wish to visit? Um, you know, guys been great, I've gone to so many nice places. Um, one place I would go over and over again would be Dubai. Um, and I would like to find a new tropical destination that has been recently taken off the list. And I'm very sad about that. <laughs> Have you been on the streets of Mumbai or streets that Puch Khana is yeah. Pasundo? Yeah, right by my house there was, uh, I think his name was Frankie or someone who made like um, Pani Puri on the street, but he made it with like really clean water and stuff and we would always go there. My kids also loved it there. We just walk. Do you have emotions uh, and you know different types of foods which you really like to consume when you are say when you're happy you really love to have a you know, tub of ice when you're a bit sad you prefer just you know having soup and just going to sleep oh like I'm that. the opposite so when I'm sad I'm the binge eater <laughs> and what do you like to eat anything that I see <laughs> um, so I usually go like last night I wasn't unhappy but I really wanted ice cream but I, we found this really amazing vegan ice cream. Um, that delivers to the house, so that was good. So I had that. <laughs> How much of your diet has changed, Sunny? You know, ever since you have taken acting as a serious you know, profession. Before that, you you know you were a different you know uh, you know different uh, work which you were doing. But you know, here when you're acting, you are literally into you know I could see like you're super duper fit, and you are into production. Coming from there to you know coming to acting, you know things have been quite different for you. Um, I think that like any human being, we go through phases and like ups and downs of how we take care of ourselves. Um, so since I've been 18 years old, I've been on like perpetual, not like a strict diet, but always very conscious about, you know, after some point, okay, you can't eat the whole box of pizza. 
like it's not gonna happen and you can't eat it two three days in a row so enjoy a little bit but also exercise I think we've come to a point in life uh, 2024 where gut health is extremely important and finding out that your gut is actually just as important as your brain um, the signals and like what it absorbs and how you take care of your gut is so so important um, and making sure that your microbiomes are good. I just like totally geek out on you right now. Um, so that's something that I... Cortisol levels, <laughs> microbiome. Not, not that. <laughs> um, but I think that it's important that with everything that's inside of our food now that we have to actually be conscious about what we eat, where our vegetables come from, uh, where our meat comes from. There's so much cross-contamination that happens. So it's definitely ever changing the diet's always changing <laughs> and i'm like just like a teeny tiny step away from taking all dairy out of my diet would but it's very very difficult who's dabba in bollywood you'd really like to have or you have had would love to have um my neighbor upstairs who has this amazing chef but no one in bollywood <laughs> everybody brings like Whatever I've seen online, they bring these big, gigantic tubs of garka khana, which is great. But then how do they function after eating all that food? Don't they want to take a nap? I feel sleepy. <laughs> we all do. What is a guilty food you really like to consume whenever you, you know, you just are on a diet, without diet also, you yeah. just want that food to have? Um, Mexican food. Yeah. I love enchiladas. I love guacamole. I love, um, I love like, I just consumed an entire gigantic burrito on my trip and I wish I had another one. My husband looked at me, he's like, you ate that whole thing? It was like this big. I was like, yeah, but it was good. And if you had to name one dish, you know, across your name, which one would it be and why? Mm. Um, it would be, if I had to name a dish, um, I don't know. It's, I don't know. It's something that has like sunrise in it or sunny. Okay. Sunny, sunny pancakes. I don't know. Wow, sunny pancakes. Like with like banana and cinnamon Mission in it. Also. Yeah. Yum. Wow. <laughs> but lovely. She's hungry. Get me She's some pancakes. <laughs> lovely, lovely chatting with you always. Whenever you have been there, you have been gracious enough to give lovely, you know, interviews. Thank you. And lovely chatting with you again. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you.